What's going on guys, Billy here, and today I want to sit down and answer a question I've been getting a lot recently, and that is, what is the best drone for mapping? Now I can say that there is one option that is overall the best choice to go with, but if you choose any mid-range to high-end drone, it's still going to give you great results. Now, two of the most recent videos I uploaded showed off how to make a 2D map as well as a 3D model, and a lot of people on that video or on those two videos were asking me if their drone was good for mapping, so I figured I'd sit down take a deep dive and kind of talk to you guys a little bit about what makes a good drone for mapping. Now before we get too far ahead of ourselves, you've got to realize that the drone mapping industry is a lot larger than you would probably expect. We've got a ton of different software platforms that allow you to stitch the photos together and make these large scale maps. There's a ton of different applications that allow you to run the missions with your drones. And then speaking of drones, there's obviously a ton of companies out there. But in today's video, I want to focus on quadcopters, specifically quadcopters. Now, the there's a whole different side to mapping and that is fixed wing systems. I probably want to go over that in a separate video. So today we're going to be answering what the best drone is for mapping and we're only going to be talking about quadcopters. It's going to be a little bit hard to try to cover everything, but hopefully you guys can bear with me. Now the first and probably most important factor when choosing a drone for mapping is its camera. It determines the resolution of your map and when using first party systems, say the DJI Mavic 2 Pro with DJI's own mapping software called Ground Station Pro, the entire flight can alter depending on which drone you have. That's because these drones have different cameras that can shoot photos in different aspect ratios and resolution sizes. So right now this flight plan is set to be mapped with the original Mavic Pro, the one that came out about two years ago now. And you can see the flight parameters at the top here, like the number of waypoints, the estimated flight time, and the estimated photo count. But check this out. If we instead choose the Phantom 4 Pro's camera, everything decreases. This mission is basically going to take us a shorter amount of time to run because of the higher resolution camera on the better drone. If we switch over to a third party system like Drone Deploy, they don't ask us which camera we're using, so it doesn't really make much of a difference concerning the flight plan. Although the end result, like the map that we create, could alter in resolution depending on the camera used. Okay, so we've got that down. I think that that was probably pretty obvious. We want to choose a drone that's got a high resolution camera equipped, but staying on this topic of cameras, we want to actually look at the shutter mechanism itself because that can play a big role in terms of what's a good or bad mapping drone. So on the Mavic Pro, the Mavic 2 Pro, and like the Altel Evo, smaller drones with smaller cameras, they have an electronic shutter which can give us rolling shutter or motion blur within our image. This type of distortion only usually happens when we're moving faster or if we're shooting fast moving subjects. So if you put your drone up in the air and you start spinning around really fast with an electronic shutter, you'll notice the entire image is almost slanted. And this poses a problem when we're mapping because remember, the drone is constantly flying over the land that you've kind of mapped your mission around. It's taking pictures as it's flying and thus could produce some sort of motion blur in the images that we shoot. Now this will reflect on the map you look at. It could be a little bit mushy and also it could give the software problems when it's trying to come and stitch together. To combat this, we want to choose a drone that has a mechanical shutter, which eliminates the rolling shutter issue, thus eliminating any motion blur as our drone is flying at faster speeds. Now this can be found in drones like the DJI Phantom 4 Pro, the DJI Phantom 4 Advanced, or even the Zenmuse X4S camera system that can be mounted to larger drones like the Inspire as well as the Matrice. Now off the top of my head, I think that these are some of the only two drones that have a mechanical shutter, but I could be wrong. Now there are always ways around needing a mechanical shutter, like choosing a slower speed for the drone to fly at or through the Ground Station Pro app, you could set your capture mode to hover and capture at point so that the drone comes to a full stop, takes the photo and then moves on to the next spot. Both of these things do increase the flight time, meaning more time in the air, but I figured I'd offer this as a workaround for those of you who might have a drone with an electronic shutter. Okay, so with all of that said, the first thing to take into account when getting a drone for mapping is its camera. You want one that can shoot high resolution images and one that has a mechanical mechanical shutter will definitely be handy. Now the next thing that you want to take into account and probably something that's just as important as the camera is the flight time. You want to make sure that this drone can stay in the air for a long time. Now something like the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic 2 Zoom is probably the gold standard at a flight time of 31 minutes. You can't get much better than that with a quadcopter unless you go with like huge massive gasoline drone 
systems. But anyway, 31 minutes is a great time up in the air. That means less time to spend having to fly the drone back, land it, less time having to swap batteries and recalibrate sensors. It's just nice being in the air for longer amounts of time. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we've got the Spark, right? Which, yes, you can use the Spark to map with like softwares like Pix4D, I believe. So the Spark is still a viable option. But again, it's not really the highest resolution image. It's also got no mechanical shutter and the flight time is only 16 minutes. So you're probably going to have to land and swap batteries quite frequently. Now I take this a step further and I like to use the Inspire 2 for the mapping jobs that I get because it has hot swappable batteries. So I'm on the ground for a maximum of 10 seconds and then I am right back in the air. I don't have to wait for the drone to boot back up. It doesn't have to recalibrate all the sensors. You'd be surprised how much time it actually saves on larger projects. So to sort of contradict what I just said about using my Inspire 2 for mapping, the third factor you wanna take into account when getting a drone for mapping is portability. For me, when I'm doing larger projects like hundreds of acres and I've got to move from spot to spot, it is a huge pain in the neck to have to bring my Inspire 2 and lug it around in my truck from location to location to kind of just send the drone up and map a quick area. So I'd much rather use the Mavic 2 Pro in certain situations when I'm out there for like a whole day from nine in the morning to four at nighttime, just mapping, 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 taking thousands of images. Again, it would be a lot easier to just throw everything inside of a backpack or a smaller case rather than lug around a huge drone. The fourth and final factor you want to take into account when choosing a drone for mapping is its image transmission system and its range. You obviously want a drone that can fly pretty far. I'd say that two miles is probably like the minimum I'd go with. So something like the Spark just really wouldn't work, obviously, for more reasons than one. But I'd go with a drone that has either OcuSync 1.0, OcuSync 2.0, or Lightbridge because that'll give you a good amount of range and you won't experience any breakup just in case there's any objects in the way or in case there's any cell towers nearby. All right, so guys, those are the four things you want to take into account when getting a drone for mapping the camera, the flight time, the portability, and the range of the drone itself, all of which are very key components of a drone. So you really want to get a drone that's got the best of all of these things for anything you're doing. But again, it is specifically true for mapping. Now, I went over that so that from there, you can make your own decision in terms of what is the best mapping drone. But for me, answering the question of the title, what the best mapping drone is, I'd say it is the DJI Phantom 4 Pro or the DJI Phantom 4 Advanced. Both both of which have the same flight specs as well as the same camera. Something that I actually noticed is that DJI doesn't actually manufacture these two drones anymore as it hasn't been in stock on their website for months and I actually just saw this notification when looking up the specs of the Phantom 4 Pro the other day saying it is not being produced by DJI themselves anymore and to check out the Mavic 2 Pro. The good thing for you if you're out there trying to pick up a good drone for mapping is you can probably get these for cheap on any other third-party website whether it's Amazon, b &H Photo, eBay, Bay, buy them used, whatever you guys want to do, you can probably find them for a pretty good price. Now let's go over these four factors in terms of the Phantom 4 Pro, right? So the camera, it's got a 20 megapixel camera. It's got a mechanical shutter, both things right there kind of check off the boxes for the camera. Second of all, the flight time, we can fly for 30 minutes. That is just incredible. In terms of portability, it's easy to throw this thing inside of a backpack or strap it to the outside of a backpack and pack in four five, maybe even six extra batteries, as well as the remote controller and any other other little accessories that you need. And in terms of the image transmission system, it uses Lightbridge 2. It gives us 4.3 miles of range. At least that's what DJI advertises. So it's good to fly long ranges. It's good to do some longer missions. And I'd say above all, it is the perfect drone for mapping. Now, before this video cuts out, I want to issue a quick warning. Yes, the Phantom 4 Pro is the best overall drone to map with, but you cannot map with the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. So if you've got one already, or if you're going out to buy one, you're not able to map with it. It's the controller with the built-in screen. There's no way to download Drone Deploy. There's no way to download Ground Station Pro or Pix4D. So if you've got that remote already, you're kind of out of luck and you're going to have to go out, buy a standard remote controller, link that up to your drone, and then use your mobile device to run your Missions. It kind of sucks because it costs more, yet the functionality is kind of like a step backwards, but that is a conversation for another day. What also is a conversation for another day is RTK. I feel like I couldn't go through making a video about the best mapping drone without talking about RTK and like ground station control points, but I'm going to save that for a totally separate video. If we're talking about the best drone for mapping overall, it's probably like the Phantom 4 RTK, but again, I'm going to save that for its own separate video because in this video, I wanted to go over like the standard consumer and professional drones, and I didn't want to take the dive into those more professional apps 
applications that are specifically made for mapping. Uh, but guys, anyway, that about wraps up this video. I'd say right now, if you've got a drone from like the Mavic Pro up to the Inspire 2 or the Matrice, you're solid. You're going to be able to make great maps with those drones. For me, the three drones I'd recommend, the three drones that are probably the best right now for mapping is the Mavic 2 Pro, the Phantom 4 Pro, or the Phantom 4 Advanced, as well as the Inspire 2. I'd say that that's like the holy trinity of mapping drones. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.